Uh, today, we're going to be talking about vaccines. Okay, vaccines, if you don't know it, are quickly becoming a, a very serious health issue um, in our country. And I think it's, it's important to take a second and look at the whole aspect of vaccines. Now, it's ultimately up to you whether you vaccinate kids or your friends, whether they vaccinate their kids. Um, but not all the time we're not getting the whole story. And so I've done a lot of research here recently on vaccines. And right now in all 50 states, <coughs> kids are required to be vaccinated. Now, fortunately, there are um, a couple of exemptions that you can file and receive if you decide not to have your kids vaccinated. Um, and tonight, what I want to do is start off with one of the most common beliefs, um, and it's that vaccines are extremely safe. Now, um, you, that, that fact might be hard to believe if you found out what's in a vaccine. Now, the ingredients that are in the vaccine, um, there are several very harmful, toxic chemicals. One of them is uh, thimerosal. And just recently, thank goodness, they actually stopped putting thimerosal in vaccines. Thimerosal has mercury in it. And mercury is not good for you to even hold. But they were putting that in vaccines. In fact, all of us um, who are over the age of about four have had vaccines with mercury in them. Um, another thing that's very dangerous is aluminum phosphate and formaldehyde. Believe it or not, formaldehyde is in every vaccine. That's embalming fluid. In fact, the, the Poison Control Center says that there's no safe amount of formaldehyde that can be put in the human body. And yet it's an ingredient in vaccines. The, the last one, one of the most harmful ones, is called phenoxyethanol. And you might know that one better as antifreeze, um, which is another ingredient in vaccines. And so knowing that, it, it uh, pays to put a little bit of time investigating whether or not these vaccines are healthy for our kids or not. Um, our, our government set up what is called a vaccine adverse event reporting system. Now, um, that's, that's how serious vaccines are reported and um, recorded in our government. Every year there's 11,000 uh, an average of about 11,000 serious reactions that are recorded in the system. Now, define serious. This is how they define it. Serious is an event that causes an emergency room visit, a hospitalization, a life-threatening event, permanent disability, or death. And so there's 11,000 of those every year that are associated with vaccines. And you may not have known that. Also, the FDA, this is true, the FDA says that only 1% of uh, vaccine problems are reported. And so that's a big number if you start looking at that. Now, one of the most, um, I just call it the craziest vaccine that they give is called hepatitis B. And they give it to newborns. When they're first born on day one, there's a little bitty six pound baby, or how big it is, it gets uh, a dosage of hepatitis B. Now, 50% of all the reactions from that vaccine are labeled serious, are, are serious. And so here is, I found this in, on WebMD, this is quote, uh, this is how you get hepatitis B, okay? You might get hepatitis, hepatitis B if you have sex with an infected person, share needles used for injecting drugs with an infected person, get a tattoo or a piercing with tools that were not cleaned well, or share personal items like razors or toothbrushes with an infected person. I don't know how many of you guys as newborn babies are doing any of this. <laughs> uh, but not to mention that, they're getting the, if they were to give me a hepatitis B shot, they would give me the same dosage or they would give that baby the same dosage they would give me. Dosages don't change uh, with vaccines. And so I find that kind of hard to believe. In fact, there's been a correlation between SIDS and vaccines. SIDS is sudden infant death syndrome. And every year, 5,000 to 10,000 babies are affected by sudden infant death syndrome. They don't know why, for some reason, uh, the baby passes away. Now, there is a correlation or a coincidence that most SID cases occur at two months and four months uh, of age for the baby. That just so happens to be the exact age that they give routine vaccinations. Now, another big coincidence is this. In, in the 1970s, Japan moved their vaccination, their vaccination ages from two months to two years. They moved it back. Their incidences of SIDS dropped dramatically. 
they went from 17th in the world to number one in the world for the least amount of babies dying when they're um, and still an infant. So, since 1988, our governments created what we call the National Vaccine Compensation Program. And this is so that we can pay families who are injured uh, by the use of vaccines. Now, as of today, they have given out almost $2 billion to families in restitution. And the funny thing about that is our government pays for that. The vaccine companies don't pay anything for whatever their vaccines do or cause. So they're not motivated to uh, correct some of these problems because they're not losing any money on it. So it, it's, it's easy to see that well, maybe vaccines aren't as safe as we once thought they were, right? Or maybe as we're told. And so it's important, if we understand that there's some major risks, is, is it a risk enough to take to give my children vaccines? And so to understand that, we have to know, do vaccines really work? Okay, that's a huge question. So is it worth it to vaccinate? And um, in fact, when I got to look in, there were documented cases of measles, uh, mumps also, smallpox, pertussis, polio, and even Hib outbreaks that have occurred in 100% vaccinated populations. So how does that happen? How does the outbreak occur when the, the populations, all of them have been vaccinated? Well, the vaccine must not have worked. Um, in Japan, back in when smallpox was a major problem, they actually have documented 29,979 deaths for people who were vaccinated. In fact, in Kansas, 1,300 people came down with pertussis. By the way, pertussis is a whooping cough. And 90% of those people were vaccinated. In 1993, there was a major outbreak in Chicago. 72% of those people were all up to date completely on their vaccines. And so maybe we're not hearing about this as much as we should, but it sounds like vaccines may not be a good way to prevent disease. <clears throat> in fact, I hear this question when I bring that up, well, what about the low disease rates in America today, right? Well,